Hello everyone and welcome to this next LM simulation video here on YouTube. So today we're going to be having a look at uh, Train Sim World 2 for the first time on the channel. Uh, I did want to bring you some TSW2 action just so that we can uh, chop and change it and vary, uh, vary it up from the uh, from the normal uh, Train Sim 2021 videos. So we've already done a Ship Simulator Extremes video. You probably won't see any more Ship Simulator from me on the channel simply because um, at the current stage of that game there's not really that much else to show. Uh, and it's not it's not a fantastic game to be honest. So uh, or simulator. Um, so for for that reason, uh, I previewed it. You can see what it is at the moment, and we'll wait until the next iteration comes before we explore further into the ship simulator scene. Um, anyhow, today we are looking at Train Sim World 2. So we're going back into the train simulator scene. Uh, this is sort of what the whole channel is based around. Um, we're going to be doing southeastern high speed and uh, featuring a look at the the all new route. Uh, it's only been out for a short while and it's a fantastic route in terms of what it provides um, it's essentially it's based upon the old Dovetail Games route from uh, Train Simulator 2021 which was uh, London to Faversham High Speed um, this one's called South Eastern High Speed so it's got a new name um, and it's got very much updated graphics it's basically a port over of the old route but it's been completely upgraded and absolutely um, stunning ver uh, version of the route uh, available and you can drive the class 395, you can drive the uh, class 375, or you can drive the class 465 if you have that as an additional DLC. I believe for the beta version of the uh, of the route, you just get the 395 and the uh, 375, which is basically what the 377 was in uh, East Coastway, which you can also see that I've got uh, in my list. So uh, we will be doing an East Coastway video. We'll be exploring a whole lot more of uh, uh, Trains in World 2 uh, as we... Um, as we sort of uh, delve into the, the series. So this is the first of the Trains in World 2 series. I hope you do enjoy it um, and, and everything that comes around it. I am going to be uh, sort of doing videos at different times now. Obviously this video will release at a different time to when my previous videos have released. This is just due to work commitments. I have to sort of work um, the, the sort of stream schedule and the, uh, and the YouTube schedule all around my work commitments, which are always changing, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, when you're young, um, like me, um, most of the time you don't end up in a, in a normal 9 to 5 job, you end up in a, in a job that has variating shifts and stuff like that, so we all have to work around that. So um, hopefully it's not too disruptive and uh, everyone can still enjoy my videos here on YouTube, they will be just going up at different times. Um, so I hope you do enjoy this video as we explore South East and High Speed from London St Pancras all the way down to Faversham in the class 395 Javelin. So I'll see you in the route in a little bit. And uh, see you in a bit. Bye bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome into South Eastern High Speed. So, this is the route. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is St Pancras International Station, where we're currently standing at the moment. And we're currently at Platform 11, uh, going to work the 1557 service to Faversham. Now this is a peak time service in the game, so we're working this as a weekday. Um, so this will be uh, 4 to 12 coaches, and it will call us uh, all, the, all the principal stations that are along the route. Uh, and essentially it will feature all of them, and it shows you all of them here. So we'll be calling it Stratford, Ebsfleet, Gravesend, Strood. And then we're onwards to Rochester, Chatham, Gillingham, Raynham, and then onwards to Sittingbourne and Faversham. And there'll be a change of power mode which we'll be doing uh, once we receive uh, into, or once we arrive, sorry, into uh, S Fleet Station, we'll be changing from uh, from the typical power mode over to uh, the typical AC over to DC, which will be interesting. Everything's set up for the journey today. It's uh, three nine five zero one zero, uh, and if we go all the way to the front, which I'm going to be doing so now. No, it's just quite a long way because you've got a 12 coach train here so it's uh, going to be quite a distance uh, you can also see we have another different unit on the front which is uh, 395 I'm not very lucky with my unit allocations um, so um, I don't tend to get the special ones you've got a few special liveries that are in, uh, in, in the game Hornby liveries and, and various bits um, so keep an eye out for them you've even got the pride livery so that, keep an eye out for that uh, but this is our train today, we're going to be working, 395007 and 010 down to, uh, down to, I believe it's uh, Faversham. This might be a service that does go further, but we'll only be taking it as far as Faversham. Anyway, let's get the, everything set up and uh, 
open the door. So I'll take you on a quick tour of the train once everything's been set up. We'll sit in the driver's seat and uh, basically begin. Let's have a look through. This is your standard class. Uh, these trains do not have first class accommodation. Uh, so once again, this is uh, one of the only trains, um, the new modern trains that have been uh, been built. Uh, it's in a high speed, long distance, multiple unit. Uh, it's been built with only one class of uh, service. Um, if, if you guys watch uh, or keep an eye on the railways at the moment, you'll also know the new class 803s for first trains east coast have also got only one class of service as well. So uh, yeah, this train is basically standard class from start to finish. There is no first class on these trains. And the standard class is quite nice. You have a little sit down, and uh, it's quite nice when you sit down. You've got your your power sockets and uh, and bits and bobs, which are located in between the seats, as they are on uh, Hitachi trains. It's nice, nice uh, feel to it. The uh, the standard class. So um, the train is quite long. You can walk throughout the whole train if you wanted to, but uh, I think that basically shows you everything. Poor bloke, whoever sits here, or whoever, madam, whoever sits here, won't have a window. That's uh, <laughs> pity them. There you go, just like a 395 sounds in real life. There you go. Right, let's get into the cab again. Uh, as we're uh, about to start this service. A very hot day in the United Kingdom as I'm recording this. Uh, in May. Uh, and it's, it's like just like this weather outside my window right now, so uh, it does quite well that uh, for making it look very realistic indeed. Right, so we've got to unlock the doors, so we'll unlock the right. If that did anything? No, oh, no, unlock right. I might need to set the cab up first, actually, that might be a good thing to do. I hope the uh, cab doors haven't, dis uh, haven't disopened on the left. Oh, yep, they have. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> if I was a train driver, I'd be fired well before now. There we go, that's a bit better. Well, at least they are closed, so that's good. Right, so, uh, as you can see, this is all done um, as and when um, everything's all been set up. So it's, uh, it's literally... I, I don't do multiple recordings. If I do things and they go wrong, you can just just goes to show how uh, how these are all done. So we'll get that done and get the AWS AWS sorted up. There we go. Uh, anything else we need to activate? The USD driver safety device. No, we'll be fine without that. DRA isolation is on. Is is not on. Well, looks fits. We can have the DRA on. Yep, that works perfectly fine. That's good. Uh, we're in neutral, so that's fine. We now need to put our day running lights on, which is perfect. And because it's, it is very hot outside, I am going to set the uh, the fan on to low, uh, and going to go on to cool. Uh, don't need anything. I think we'll go on to roof aircon. Uh, I think that should do basically uh, to get everything done. That is about right. We'll turn our um, desk illumination onto high just because when we do get into the tunnels, it does get pretty dark even in the middle of the day. So it's certainly uh, certainly worth getting everything done. When you uh, when you do arrive into uh, Epsilon International, you do need to do the uh, the changeover to DC. We'll get onto that once we do it. It's a pretty simple system. Um, I'll probably get it wrong because uh, I only ever do one one take of these videos, so uh, I'll probably get it wrong. But uh, don't worry about that. We'll we'll see what happens. Uh, it's a pretty simple system, and uh, I tend to keep forgetting it for some reason. Uh, probably because I don't do these videos every day, but hey. Let's have a look at this uh, 395 that's just coming in here. Forms the Margate service, I believe, on the other platform. So number 28 there, on the front, leading. Another 12 car service, most likely, yep. And you've got number 003. Blimey, I was going, I think that was 003. Double O three, yeah, double O three. No special liveries for us today, by the looks of it. 
No, train will be quite busy, that's for sure. Just realised that uh, by closing the doors on the that side, we've actually well. That's all that sorted. <laughs> that's only because I opened them on the wrong hand side, so it uh, closed all the doors automatically. So it looks like we're going to be a little bit late leaving today. Um, pretty typical, I would say, uh, of, of my services to be late leaving, but uh, nonetheless, it should be good. Hopefully you can make back some time. British Railways are never on time, really, so to be late is uh, nothing unusual. Some lovely cloud textures in the game now. Um, I'm not too sure if this is... I think this might be a... Uh, yeah, I think this might actually be uh, a bit of uh, third-party DLC, if you know what I mean, um, that I've uh, implemented, a bit of uh, a modification of some kind, just so that it can uh, enhance the experience, because it looks fantastic, it really does. Right, let's go. Hopefully. I think we were going somewhere at that point, were we? Uh, no, it didn't look like it. Um, right, let's uh, CTRL and make sure that everything's been done. There you go, it was just the virtual circuit breaker. We're going to be even later now. Oh well. Got to get used to driving these trains and, uh, and doing them as, as well as you can. That MCB VCB lights, that shouldn't be illuminated. If it is, it means that there's no current going from the uh, going from whatever traction mode you're in to, to, the, uh, to the train itself. So as you can probably see, we're in kilometres an hour at the moment. Anything on high speed run is usually done in kilometres an hour. Uh, the reason behind that is uh, purely because uh, in kilometres an hour, this is sort of uh, an international area here uh, where it shares it with uh, Eurostar and Eurostar work in kilometres an hour, you see, so it's uh, high speed one. So instead of having your normal, uh, instead of having your normal things, you've got everything in kilometres an hour, so that means 60 kilometres an hour, I believe. Might be a little bit late into Stratford because these timings are very difficult to achieve uh, once you're late because they're high speed timings, you see. So we'll see. Get going. You can see we're going up the, uh, the incline now out of uh, St Pancras. Beautiful day. That line there on the left hand side is uh, what I believe is called Copenhagen Junction uh, onto the uh, East Coast Main Line out of London King's Cross. It's, uh, next to St Pancras in real life is uh, London King's Cross Station. And there we go, we're now going to TVM 430 in cab signalling, which as you can see here shows the 80 uh, on the signalling display. It should go up now in a few seconds, up to. hope it goes up. There you go, 200, that'll do. And then the cab goes very dark. Or it should do. Normally it does. There you go, pitch black. <laughs> That's what it's more like in the tunnel. Yeah, so uh, they've done a lot of research on this route and they've uh, basically uh, given you a, a very enhanced product whereby you can uh, you can visualize exactly what it's like in real life. So they've interviewed actual real life train drivers that use high speed one and said, you know, how dark is it? Just so that we know how dark to make the cab when it goes into the tunnel. And uh, the 
the overall answer has been extremely dark. Uh, you can't see anything other than things that are lit up. You basically you can't see. So you have to have your hand on the power handle at all times. And you've got to have a knowledge on where the notches are because you won't be able to see much when you're inside these tunnels. And they don't turn the cab light on because it tends to reflect in the windscreen, which means you can't see what's coming in front of you, which is uh, a very bad thing. So. So when this starts flashing, it means the speed is going to be changing at the next flag, which you'll see. These these little flags that come up are the, effectively the signal, um, the blocks, signal blocks. So that should show 200. Yep, so that's flashing 200. So I'm going to start braking now because the next one's probably going to start flashing 175. You tend to get used to these as you drive the route more and more often, as you tend to know what this what the sort of protocol is as you approach. So that's 160 now. As long as you're below that speed by the uh, by the next flag, then you should be fine. So we seem to be braking quite well here. You don't realise how fast these stations come up when you're doing this speed, you see, so you might think why are you braking when you're three miles away, but you really do need to start braking when you're three miles away. That is for sure. Especially if you've driven any of the high speed routes in France, they've got plenty of them in Trentum uh, 2021, and uh, you've also got LGV in Trentum World. Uh, now that route is quite tricky if you're not used to your high speed routes. You know, breaking for Marseille Saint Charles or stages in between Avignon. It's certainly quite interesting on those routes, so always better to get used to them. And we're just approaching here at uh, Stratford International. We're about, uh, well, it looks a bit three minutes late, which uh, isn't surprising. And I think we'll stop about here. This should be all right. Put the reverse into neutral, and then. keep thinking it's these door release buttons, but it isn't, it's this open door button instead. These are, I don't know why these are clickable, they shouldn't be clickable, I think in real life they must just be lights. Uh, you must press this and then uh, these lights come on and then press this and these lights go off. So it's uh, overly confusing why these are clickable buttons, it really is. Anyway, we're approaching 230 kilometers an hour, which I believe is around 140, I believe. If I'm right, uh, the maximum speed you can do on these lines is 140. Uh, and this is the last section of uh, high speed line between here and uh, Evsleet. Once we get to Evsleet, we then turn off and head towards the classic DC lines uh, towards Faversham. If you go straight ahead at Evsleet, you head towards Ashford International, and that's where services for Dover Priory go towards that, that, uh, that side of it. I wish they'd complete the route that way. Um, I'd love a bit more high speed action on this route, it's uh, very fun indeed. Right, let's get going. Not leaving anything to chance here. We are a little bit late, so we need to make that that time. These things can accelerate quite fast, um, although a kilometre an hour is not the same measurement as a mile an hour. So, because um, a kilometre is actually shorter than a mile, so these these uh, speeds will go up a lot quicker in kilometres than they would in miles an hour. You'll notice that once we get onto the DC lines when this uh, display will function in miles an hour instead. Um, you don't have the same acceleration rates in miles an hour that you would in kilometres an hour, even in the same power mode, uh, just because of the conversion rate basically. Although this train is slower to accelerate on uh, 
DC than it is on AC. Please the maximum speed of these units on DC is approximately 100 miles an hour. And there we go, notch 4, as we go towards 225. Back into the tunnels, as we head uh, under what is uh, the other side of Stratford, towards Barking, where we'll be going underneath, uh, and then we'll be rising just to the other side of Barking, um, around the site, site of the uh, Dagenham Ford Works on the right hand side, which is where Ripple Lane Freightliner Terminal is, uh, the Ripple Lane FLT. where a lot of the uh, high speed one freight trains go up from Dobbins Moor to get uh, the uh, goods into the capital. So I think they wanted something a little bit less monotonous. A lot of people um, shy away from creating routes that involve a lot of tunnels because all, you, all you're doing is driving in tunnels. This is literally um, pretty much. Um, this is literally like a cross rail simulator at this point because uh, cross rail, most most of that's in tunnels. Um, so there's not really much you can you can do or see with that. But it, when you get out of the tunnels, which is a nice section between sort of Ripple Lane and just outside of Ebbsfleet, uh, and then you go back into the tunnels once you've gone over the Dartford Dartford flyover and um, straight into uh, Ebbsfleet. It's not far then. We're still going down and now we're going back up again so now we're rising out of the tunnel uh, so we would have just gone under barking and now we're rising towards Dagenham and that sort of way uh, on the route so if I show you the route map quickly uh, this is where we are currently this is where we started in uh, St Pancras uh, this is Stratford International and we're going to be going towards this is Ebbsfleet where we branch off and the line goes south and then we'll be continuing along this route this is Hoo Junction Strood, and then you've also got uh, I think that's Gilling Gillingham, Gillingham, um, and then you've you've got the route all the way down to Farisham, where the line breaks off in either direction. So it's not a not a massive route, but it uh, does the job. Um, don't ask me why there's no labels on the uh, Train Sim World Two maps. It's something that I've constantly brought up with uh, uh, with the developers of of, of the game, Dovetail Games. Uh, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me how you can possibly have a, a, a 2D map that doesn't have any detail on it, it just has the roots, there's no indication of what is what or where is where, like I'd hope that would be strewed that I've just pointed out, <laughs> there's no indication to say it is, uh, but I hope that's strewed, looks like strewed, um, but it's yeah, it's just a bit useless, um, doesn't seem like anyone's doing anything about it though unfortunately, but maybe that's one for the future, maybe they're working on a big core update, you never know these uh, Dovetail games. go so we've now risen out of the tunnels and we're now on the uh, sort of Dagenham side of it on the right hand side you'll have uh, the Ford Motor Works and uh, there's also a stone terminal Dagenham Dock stone terminal over there as well not much of that is featured in the game because uh, there's no there's nothing you can really drive on it um, nothing you can really do with it so it's not featured in the game for that reason it is featured in the old game though uh, in Train Sim, well, uh, sorry, Train Sim 2021. So if you get the London to Fashion route in that, we'll be featured in that. Lovely. I believe that there that we just passed is uh, Raynham in Essex, uh, not the one that we're going to, but there's a Raynham in Essex uh, and a Raynham in Kent. Uh, but that's Raynham in Essex. I've stood there on that bridge that we've just gone under in real life, filled with some Class 395. It's a beautiful bridge. Very well done. It's a gorgeous location for catching uh, high speed one action. I even caught a class 92 on there uh, in the middle of the day, travelling light engine back to Dolan's Moor. I do want to try out some more of high speed uh, one when I get a chance. It's a beautiful railway um, and I can't wait for high speed two. It will be, I think it will be even more 
over engineered than this, <laughs> even more expensive. Um, and some of the viaducts are going to be gorgeous for catching some of the uh, high speed trains on when it's finally built. I think High Speed 1 serves its primary purpose of inter intercontinental travel, that's really the main purpose of High Speed 1. Whereas High Speed 2 is, is, is sort of about uh, like an LGV of the UK, uh, a Ligne Grande Vitesse, which is uh, in France uh, a high speed line basically. So LGV Sud-Ouest is southwest and uh, Sud-Est, southeast. So doing quite well here as we uh, cruise towards uh, FC International. We're due there in a minute. We're not going to be there in a minute. Obviously, we're still five miles away. We're about three minutes behind schedule. I don't think we'll make that time up, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Depends how uh, lenient the timings are once we get onto the DC line. So the next station will be changing over the power modes to DC from AC. So here we've got the overhead cables of high speed one. This is the, um, the bridge over. I think this is the Dartford Bridge, I believe. I can't remember what it's exactly called, but uh, that's one of the major motorways that goes over the Dartford area as we head towards Epsleet and into Kent slowly. I'd like to break and uh, make sure that we're. Uh, doing alright on the brakes. It is a bit slow going down because you are going a 2.5% downwards gradient into this tunnel. We are already slowing down now for Ebsleet. So no messing about here. As we head upwards, now the braking becomes a little bit easier. So I can relax it on the brake a little bit. Let the train start to slow down itself, that's good. I mean, we'll be there in next to no time. 1.5 miles when you're on a high-speed line is nothing. As you can see, we're doing well, getting the uh, speed down nice and quickly. Not having to worry. And now we come out the tunnel. Now all we've got to do is basically focus on uh, braking for Ebsfleet. Effectively this is our line speed coming into Ebsfleet. do want to brake a little bit more just because we are a little bit on the high side of coming into a station. We're about 60 miles an hour. So we do need to start braking a little bit. My conversion between miles per hour and kilometres is not great so if I was off there I do apologise. I tend to hope that we're around 60 miles an hour. That AWS is warning us that we're uh, coming into a change of uh, power mode area. See if the rear of our train is in the platform, it is. I'm going to stop here. That'll do for me. Right, and we'll uh, door release on the right, which is that button there. Put us into neutral, and now we need to change over. So, the uh, easiest way to do this is pan down, shoes up, and then pan up, shoes down, and select over to DC. Pan up, shoes down again. hope this does it, unless I've missed something. I probably have missed something here, because they're not getting any line voltage.
It's easy when you know how, not easy when you don't. Something will be amiss here that uh, I'll be doing wrong, obviously. We're not going to get any power from that, I know that for, for a fact, so... I'm going to hope that's in uh, third rail now, by the looks of it it is. Although we have opened up the front coupler for some unknown reason, god knows why. Um, we'll just leave it at that, so uh, let's close the doors and get on the way. That is a poor demonstration of how to change power modes here at uh, Epsley. It is easy when you know how, which I don't, because I don't drive this route anywhere near often enough, that is for sure. Let's get going. We'll leave the front coupler open just to have a bit of variation, you know. As you can see, the uh, Acceleration even in uh, DC mode is still quite fast, so always got to be careful of that. Well, we're going up to 70 in a minute though, anyway, so we're now in miles per hour, as you probably noticed. So that uh, signifies we're back on the classic DC lines. As we head towards our next station, which is Gravesend. We were due there a minute ago, but that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Now, I wonder if the um, we've got uh, platform information screens on this route that are active, and they uh, they reflect the the values of, of the trains as they run, real time information running. It's it's something that is God knows how they've done it, but. Uh, They've managed to work it out. I wonder if it's going to show that our train is delayed now. So uh, we'll have a quick look once we get to Gray's End to see what their PRS screens are saying. Telling the passengers that this train is delayed. I'm going to start braking for this 30 about as late as humanly possible just so that we can uh, have as good a chance of making back time as possible. That seems about there for me. This train is awful at braking, it really is. Yeah, it's not got the best brakes in the world, this train. It really has not got the best brakes in the world. Uh, there we go, it's still speeding. Seems to be alright though. Let's keep that at uh, 30 miles an hour. As we approach here into, this is our next station. Gravesend, so this is the uh, new remodelled version of Gravesend, so in the, in the old days they used to have, uh, oh god, what have I done there, oh, pressing too many buttons, they used to have uh, through lines at Gravesend for trains that didn't stop during the peak, um, but these days they've just replaced them with platforms, because uh, they've got Thameslink down here now, so they need to make sure that they've got additional capacity basically, so uh, I'll have a look at these platform information screens in a sec. See what they say. Right, let's go and have a look at these PIS screens, see if we're late. I know we are late, I just want to see whether they reflect that. Obviously the nearest PIS screen is all the way under here. Yes, as you can see, we are now due 1623. There you go. So they're fully integrated with the train. So if you are running a little bit late, they will showcase that. It is fantastic. This implementation is being added to other routes in the game. It's already been added to the uh, Long Island Railroad, I believe, uh, which is something that people have been wanting for a while. It's a route I do want to get in the future, so I haven't got it for now, but uh, hopefully I will soon. Let's get ourselves on the way.
Right, let's get the doors closed now. And on our way. As we depart Gray's End, our next station is Strood. Now Strood, let me sure it's 15 mile an hour approach speed when you're coming from this, this part of it. I think it's 15 from the other part as well. It's quite one of those stations where you're never going to be, if, if you're late, you're never going to make back any time simply because of the, um, the sharp uh, speeds that you've got to maintain when you approach the station. You've got quite a long time unless you approach Strood as well. And, um, We've also got uh, Who Junction Yard, which we'll pass uh, on our way. Usually got some uh, AI in there, actually, which is quite nice uh, of, the, uh, of the game. So do keep an eye out for that. to 70 now by the looks of it, which is good. And we'll speed limit. So due in so strewed in two minutes, but I don't think we're gonna be there in two minutes given we're still five miles away and we're on the DC line, so we're never gonna make back that much time, unfortunately. Showcase the horn when we're outside the cap. It's one of those horns I'm not, not too impressed of it, unfortunately. I think the only horn that I really enjoy in this game, the only real horn that I enjoy, is either of the, uh, the American horn, back when they had the, uh, the first route in the game. Um, that was a fantastic, uh, that was a fantastic horn. But uh, ever since then, I think the best one's been the Class 377 and the 375 consequently have the same horn. It's a, it's a brilliant horn, you can really hear it in, when you're inside the cab. Um, I was uh, on a class 150 yesterday, 150-2, and we were going inside and outside tunnels, uh, and I was located right behind the cab, and uh, had the windows open because it was very, very hot. Um, and when he did the horn, it absolutely deafened you. So, to hardly be able to hear the horn from inside the cab is utterly unrealistic. Anyhow, this bit of DLC here, Class 465, you won't see that if you don't have the Class 465 uh, as a separate DLC. So that is uh, automatically applies in the game if you've got it, uh, but if you haven't got it, uh, it doesn't apply. Uh, nice to see it though, definitely nice to see it as we approach Who Junction here, which is on the, uh, the right hand side. And the left hand side as well, you've also got part of it there, and a branch line that goes off to... Uh, uh, to, to a separate uh, a separate terminal, freight terminal. It's just the most unrealistic part of the game is that horn. It's just the fact that you just barely hear it, and that's not realistic. Anyway, you've got Class 66 of uh, EWS. I think you've got another one over there as well, idling, and some freight wagons. We've got another 66 as well. It's quite busy here at Hu Junction. Nice to see. Obviously, we don't have JNA wagons and stuff like that in the game. When I say JNA, I mean the network rail ones. I know these are JNAs, are different JNAs though for, uh, for the old Mendic contract. That's uh, that's Hugh Junction Yard though. So we've got uh, 3.2 miles until Strew. wind inside and outside this route. It is a very, very nice route indeed. Very well detailed and I do enjoy it. Let's have a little fly pie. Well, 
Oh, we got the uh, rear cab. <laughs> the, uh, the the rear cab. Uh, oh, gee, it was uh, on the wrong side of that yellow line. Yeah, I got the rear rear coupler opened as well for some reason. Just gonna ignore that. Sometimes you press buttons and you don't know what they do. So. So this is the uh, long tunnel if you approach into um, Strood Station. Uh, basically once we come out of this tunnel we'll go back into the tunnel uh, and then once we come out of that tunnel we'll then be into Strood Station. It's around 15 miles an hour usually. You can see it's advising us we've got 70 speed limit which is basically what we're on already uh, as we duck in and out of the tunnels here. And then once we uh, once we exit this tunnel, you'll see that this will change to 15 miles an hour, which is our next upcoming speed limit in 1.3 miles. Until then, I like to keep the speed limits as high as possible, just so that we uh, maintain our uh, our schedule to, to what we can do. Obviously, we are now three or four minutes late. I'd say we're more like four minutes late, given the fact that we've got to do 15 as we approach this station. Basically, we'll cruise now as we approach into uh, into Strood. Obviously, if it being 15, it's quite a low quite a low speed limit. I think everything's just gone wrong. It could possibly go wrong now. Well, it's certainly not going to be on time now. See, even on emergency, it will take about a year to slow down. Why is... Is that never going to stop beeping? Oh, blimey. Right, we're going to be even later now. God knows why that happened. I'm not quite sure why that happened. Um, Jeez. The amount of beeping this train does when it, uh, things go wrong. And it's not going anywhere. <laughs> this is uh, a run that's haunted for me. Certainly haunted. be able to get any uh, traction current or is it oh no it's put the MCB on now because obviously something's gone wrong there we go so we're going to be about 10 minutes late now <laughs> by the time we finally get everything sorted out doesn't like how quickly I was approaching that station without uh, braking so I'll put us up to about 30 and then we'll just have to cruise unfortunately otherwise we'll just have another hissy fit these trains are really this is the problem with these trains, it doesn't trust the train driver at all, there's no trust involved, it's, you, you've got to do what the computer wants you to do and if you don't then you pay the price. I think technology is unfortunately probably humanity's only downfall at the moment. A lot of people say that the world is now a better place with technology, well I, I think it goes both ways, I think obviously. Technology has done a lot for this world, but at the same time, it, you know, humans can't be trusted anymore, I don't think, and that's why we've got technology, I think, because the old fashioned ways have gone out the window. Obviously, there's a lot of different circumstances for that, but hey. Hello, my friend, that's another one. We might see one of the special services uh, that might pass us on an AI train. I have had it in the past where I've approached these stations and um, and had maybe train bow approach us or, or the Hornby one. Ah, it's only a six coach train, that. Interesting. So quite busy for a six coach train, as you can see. Some people might be saying, oh, rush hour, it's come early. <laughs> it certainly has. Right, 
just get the doors open and apologise to all the passengers for the uh, for the delay. As you can see, according to the uh, platform information screens, we are now quite late. I mean, that's even that's wrong. <laughs> we're even later than it than it says we're late. So that's pretty bad. Okay. Well, I think these services are DOO. If I think correctly, well, it, it's operating it as DOO. There's no guard, so we'll uh, we'll go with that. Not sure if they're DOO in real life, but, uh, but hey. Just trying to see if there is a, f a front train, front prepar couple of front preparation. Yeah, that's open. No, there's no way to close it. Okay, we'll just leave it open, that's fine. And we'll get on our way now towards. Uh, so Pancras, don't know why it's put us in reverse. Let's get going. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to make that much time between these stations. The stops are now so so close together. I mean, as you can see here, our next stop is uh, 0.6 of a mile away. So we haven't really got much time to be able to... Uh, Claw back any uh, any of the delay, unfortunately. We climb up this 1.2% gradient. The line coming in from the right here is the line from London Victoria. That's the line that comes down from London Victoria and through the stations and onto our line. So uh, here at Rochester, uh, they have two stations. They have the old station, which is now decommissioned and out of use, and then they have the new station, which is now complete and in use, and we'll be approaching uh, the new station today, uh, as they do in real life. I have to say, the uh, the high-speed portion of this route only lasts for so many miles between uh, Evsleet and St Pancras. I think between then and... Um, between Ebbsfleet and uh, Rochester, you might as well be in a 375. It's uh, you're not really going to get any higher speeds, unfortunately. There's no EPS enhanced permitted speed for these uh, class 395s. They have to do the uh, 375 speed limits, unfortunately. And the class 700 speed limits as well. Now you've got the 700s coming down here as well. So all these stations down here are also served by uh, Thameslink with services uh, from other sides like Peterborough and uh, I think Bedford. part of connecting the routes. Uh, interesting bit of information I learned, I believe it was uh, yesterday when I was uh, out on the railways with uh, a friend of mine, it's a 375. Uh, the old uh, chart leak on depot at uh, Ashford International uh, is being recommissioned at the moment, hoping to reopen at some point and it looks like uh, they want to move the um, Hitachi Depot to chart leak on and then re reuse the Hitachi Depot as a Thameslink Depot for, for Thameslink services to Ashford International which I, I don't think they've happened yet but when they do that will be an ideal base for them this is Rochester, this is the new station rather than the old station. The old station is just around that corner, you'll be able to see the platforms as we go past, but this is the new station. Uh, it's quite nice, certainly very nice indeed. So we have a quick look, we can uh, have the route map in. As you can see here, we are uh, at Rochester here, going towards Chatham, Gillingham, Raynham, Newington, Sissingbourne, Tainham, Faversham. We don't stop at Tainham or Newington though. Uh, they're intermediate stations. Although you can drive trains on this route that do stop there, such as the Class 375 and the 37, uh, sorry, and the 465. So as it says on the uh, PIF screen, yeah, we're a little bit late, later than it says. So let's get back in the cab and uh, get going.
And there we go, departing from uh, Fabishim here. Uh, not Fabishim, chat. <laughs> Keep thinking, don't know where I am at all. Absolutely no idea. Losing the, losing the well in this game. Rochester, we're leaving now. Um, next station is Chatham. You'll be able to see the old platforms at Rochester as we go around this curve. Fortunately, the speed limit's only 30 uh, at the moment. And it's going to stay that way, by the looks of it, all the way through to Chatham. So as I say, there's not really much chance to be able to to pull back on the sign table here, unfortunately. So you can see here, we've got the old platforms here at uh, Rochester. Part of the expansion plans, they decided to extend the platforms. And the only real way to be able to extend the platforms here would be to basically re re issue the station, re uh, redevelop the whole station and move it. A very similar thing uh, is might be being proposed near me um, down at the uh, Liverpool South Parkway. I know that Avanti West Coast would like to operate there. Uh, however, when um, London North Western Railway operate there with their eight car Desiros Class 350s, uh, they have to, I think it's front four coaches only on them um, due to the uh, short platform. Um, so God knows how you're going to serve that with a Pendolino you know, front three coaches or something like that. It must be pretty pointless. Um, but uh, in order to allow that service to stop there, you'd have to extend the platforms. But I believe, just like you had at uh, Rochester there, obviously there's no option to extend the platforms at the old site, so they might have to build a whole new station. Although that's very, very unlikely, I think, for Liverpool South Parkway, given the fact that it's got its uh, connections over to uh, Mersey Rail. So it's, it's a bit of a between a rock and a hard place. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to extend the platforms. I'd love to see them try. So uh, good luck to them if they're planning to. About here will do. This is... Chatham Station. Yeah, now you can see how late we are. About we're over five minutes late now, so we're just getting later. So that's what happens at this timetable. Once you once you're late once, you're, you're late for the rest of the journey, unfortunately. So that's that. Let's see how uh, busy our train still is. Is it? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much empty now. It's like it's one of these trains that. Uh, you know, pretty much once it leaves London, it's rammed. But uh, once you basically get to these side of the stations, it's just empty. There goes that three seven five on the other platform. Let's get back in our seat and uh, on the way. We haven't got that many stations left now on the run down to uh, Famisham. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it is a fantastic route, um, and I'm in a moment just going to talk about the uh, the route itself. So the route itself is available um, over on Steam. It's called South East and High Speed. It's available for £24.99. I think it's well worth every penny of that. I really do. It's, uh, it's a superb route. It's very, very well done, and now that the implementation of the PIS screens has been involved, I think that's just increased its. Uh, I think that's, in, that's increased its sort of realism to the route. It's added a new dimension to it. I mean, it was already a very good route, but uh, I enjoy it because it's got high speed one in it. And as soon as I heard about it, I was like, you know, I've got to drive that. I've got to have a go on that. And it is—it's everything that I'd like. And you've even got the class 465 now, so you can. I think you can buy it as a bundle with the class 465, so it might be cheaper that way. Uh, it's certainly worth having a look, and I'll uh, link it in the description of the video. Uh, a link to purchase this uh, online at Steam. Um, do keep an eye out those; they do hold regular Steam sales, so it might be uh, better for you to wait for a Steam sale to be able to get this. Although by no means am I saying uh, hold off getting it; it is certainly worth it at the full price. 
um, so it'll be even more worth it if you can get it at a discount. So well, we've got a double yellow here as we approach into Gillingham. So on the uh, right hand side when we approach into Gillingham you'll get the uh, the other platforms as well as the uh, the depot as we leave Gillingham. You'll see the uh, electric multiple unit depot that uh, South Eastern have at Gillingham. But it's certainly worth every penny this 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 route for what you get with it. The class 395 is, is excellent, the 375 is, is you know beautifully done and the 465, uh, I haven't given that a proper drive yet but it's, it's you know from what I've seen and, and from the brief experiences I've had with it, very much worth it, that is for sure. PIF screens were not um, developed with the release of the route, unfortunately. So um, when it first came out, you didn't have any of them, which was a bit sad. Um, so I think it appeals more now to people now that the PIF screens are functional and now that it's got that extra dimension of reality um, than when it did when it was first released. So now is the right time to be able to get this route. And uh, as the PIF screen um, sort of implementation goes across the Dovetail Games route, so I think it becomes more and more appealing as a as a route. So certainly worth it. But uh, here we are. Put the DRA on. So we've got a red. Uh, that'll clear to green. Just depends on what they want to do. Sometimes they terminate services at Chilling uh, if they're running late. Although I highly doubt it if that's a uh, I highly doubt it if it's a South Eastern High Speed service. So you've got the, uh, I think this is a signalling centre, it might be a signalling centre, I'm not entirely sure, um, someone who's closer to the route will obviously be able to advise better on that. to notch 4. And on the right hand side as we leave you'll see uh, the electric multiple unit depot here at Gillingham. Uh, Ch Gillingham, sorry, <laughs> not kidding. Keep learning how to say these places. So next stop is Raynham, I believe that's where the uh, Thameslink services terminate when they head down this uh, this section of the, the route so far, um, although as I said, future expansion includes services to Ashford International, so that really does provide some connection across London, that really does. It's sort of an alternative to, to Crossrail basically for the, for the South, is, is Thameslink is basically its own version of Crossrail. Uh, Crossrail does uh, what Thameslink does for other routes, you know, you can go from Bedford to to Raynham uh, in the same way Crossrail will get you from Reading to Shenfield. So very, very useful indeed. Unfortunately. 
Uh, as much as uh, Raynham is served by the Class 700s, uh, they're not included in this route uh, and they're not going to be included in the London to Brighton route which is upcoming for Trains in World 2. Um, that's very sad to, to hear and uh, they, are, they are working on, uh, on as much as they can but uh, unfortunately no sign of the Class 700s in any train simulators yet. Uh, apart from the, uh, the version in, uh, in, in the, I think it's a... Uh, AI only version that they've got uh, in Train Sim 2021 at the moment. Oh, it looks like we've flown down to a red as well. Again, being signal checked, that's for sure. approach here into uh, this is Raynham not Raynham in Essex this is Raynham in Kent we've got another class 395 oh, it's a bit heading this way That's not a special livery either. Looks like we're uh, running out of luck with these special liveries. We really are. It's only a six coach. Oh, we've got a green. There you go. Might just be this level crossing. You never know. 395 should get on the road, uh, get on the uh, get on the way very shortly. But it's a bit. Let's see uh, what the PIF screens are saying. 1651 now. Oh God, we're getting later and later. It's uh, not going in our favour, is it? Unfortunately. Uh, sat down. Surprised that uh, 395 on the other side hasn't left yet, must be running early. Get these doors shut. Oh, we're going to be on the way quicker than he is. Yeah, he's there for quite a while, this bloke. Really. 1650 to London, Victoria. That's interesting. Okay. Won't question that. <laughs> he's certainly not going to London, Victoria, that's for sure. Now we're going to be passing through one of the stations. 
think this is Newington, if I, my memory serves me correctly. Uh, as we pass through on the, on the fast lines, uh, Newington, I believe, is only served by uh, obviously the slower services, not served by Thameslink or anything like that, because Thameslink to uh, terminated uh, Raynham. Must be served by the stopping services that go down towards uh, stations towards Dover Priory and uh, Margate from London, Victoria. Here we go, as we pass through. Newington. And well, we're now speeding. So we head towards our last two stations, Sittingbourne, um, and then onwards to Faversham, where this uh, this route terminates. I believe this train terminates. Get back up to uh, proper line speed now. So we got to uh, 80 miles an hour. So we're only a mile out of Sittingbourne now. So that line to the left there, 20 miles an hour to the left, goes almost to the Sheerness branch, uh, which, I, which I would have liked to have been included. Just do a little bit of 466 action between uh, Sittingbourne and Sheerness, but unfortunately it hasn't. Seems to be all right. It's just as soon as I saw we were doing 70 miles an hour, and the train and the uh, station was coming into sight, I was a bit like, "Oh dear." I know we're trying to make that time, but I think that's a bit of a cruel way to do it. I know this thing doesn't have the greatest brakes in the world, but it seems to be all right. It seems to be the platforms are longer than you truly believe they are. So this is sitting Bourne. The next station onwards after this will be Farisham. Right, let's open the doors here. Got a nice little freight train there on the left hand side in the sidings here at Sitting Hall. Go down, 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 onwards in the route towards uh, this here, which is Farish. Have a little zoom around here. Nice station indeed, that is for sure. So seven minutes late, well, technically eight minutes late now. 
going to bode well for uh, if you've got any connections on this service, that's for sure. Anyhow, we're nearly done with the southeastern high speed. Right, let's get the doors locked. If there's one thing I've learned from this video, it is to uh, to definitely make sure that uh, you're familiar with the train before going ahead and driving it uh, in a video for for YouTube. Um, I, I thought I knew the, the process uh, for changing power modes, uh, it's pretty simple, but uh, clearly I didn't know at that time, so uh, that's alright though, we got there in the end and we're nearly at Powertrim. So I hope you have enjoyed this video today, for all of you guys that are out there that have been watching it, um, this is a complete um, sort of a review, but sort of a, a route showcase for Dovetail Games. Uh, and their Trains from World 2, London's Farrowstream High Speed, which is uh, South Eastern High Speed. It's a fantastic route. I, I do, do encourage you to get it. It is one of those routes that Dovetail Games have really nailed, and probably because it's uh, on their own territory, but it's, uh, it's a very, very, very well made route, and it's uh, well put together. Uh, the platform information screens are something that I nearly cried when I saw them in, in, in Trains from World, because I was like, well, that's the epitome of it now. Now you've got platform information screens and you've got an ability to just go around and ride the trains you could theoretically on a route just be a passenger all day long um, and it just excites me that, that there is a whole new dimension that they've opened up and allowed you to to access now um, one that was already there but they hadn't allowed you to to access it in the extent that you can now access it now and as uh, I, a part-time hobby of mine is, is traveling on the trains doing routes, uh, ticking them off. Uh, as I was doing yesterday, I did many of the routes in the north, um, which was nice and fun. To be fair, done very well, and um, you can sort of do it in the in the, um, in the the virtual world now as well, so it's uh, very exciting. A very well put together route, uh, and out of 10, I'd probably give this a solid 9. A solid 9. Uh, it's probably the only one thing that could do with it being a bit better would be the inclusion of the Sheerness branch and maybe the extension down to Ashford International. They're the only downfalls that this route really has. And that dreadful horn. That absolutely dreadful horn on the 395. It, it just needs up falling. All of the horn physics need up falling on most of the trains, except the 377, 375. They seem to be alright. And I haven't tried the 465 yet, so... But I'd solidly give this a 9 out of 10. This is a, a very high quality, well made route. Runs perfectly fine uh, on my computer, so hopefully it will run perfectly fine on yours too. But it is, it is exactly what you can do with, with a rail engine 4. I just want to get hold of the uh, the sound engineer for, the, for these games and, and strangle them. Because honest to god, they need... They need their head caved in for the amount of dreadfulness that has come out of Dovetail Games. When you've got a route that looks this good, and then you've got a train which uh, has a horn that, that sounds like you're squeezing a duck to death, it's useless, absolutely useless. And it, you know, horns are the loudest part of a train, easily the loudest part of a train. So um, I don't understand why they've got to make it so quiet. But people do the horn so often because you just want to hear it. But I think if you if you were a real life train driver, you wouldn't want to do the horn very often because it would deafen you. You know, so you want you want to be an immersive experience. Then turn the the, the ruddy train sounds up to, to eleven. That's what they need to do. They really need to nail that. And the the, the sooner they do that, the better that the uh, the game gets. It's the only improvement they need. Ah, there we go. That's your train bow for you. So we have seen it today. As, as, uh, as usual in real life with my uh, unit allocations, I never get anything interesting. Um, my friends of mine do, um, but, uh, but I, I never. 
Um, a friend of mine the other day was going home on uh, 391 Progress. Uh, it's been a train I've been trying to get on and uh, have it for traction and, and, and what for many, many, many moons. But um, it's never happened. And, and Free Night is um, on my local local line. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it'll be one of them that I'll never get. But uh, fair enough. All the more exciting when you do get it. That's, that's the way I think of it. Blimey, that 375 is chasing that down, isn't it? Right, so we're not too far out of. Uh, oh, slow down. We're not too far out of. Uh, oh, I should now. So, uh, I'd like to now say I do hope you have enjoyed this video uh, and everything it does bring, and um, that it inspires you to get uh, the Trains in World 2 to route. If you haven't got Trains in World 2, it is a fantastic game, and they're, they're making it even better with the Glasgow Cathcart Circle that's coming out very soon. Uh, as well as London to Brighton, as I said before, and the Rush Hour DLC in the summer. So we've got a lot of uh, a lot of new routes coming to it, and it's really exciting to see it developing. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to, to try out some of the new stuff that's coming out for it. So onwards and upwards for the guys at uh, Dovetail Games. I think it's uh, brilliant from them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please do leave a like, comment and uh, you can even subscribe um, for more action here on LM Simulation, I will be back, I've uh, got some flight sim uh, footage that I'd like to put up, some flight simulator videos in, in the future coming up in, uh, in June, so do keep an eye out for that and my usual train sim uh, 2021 videos as well, so do keep an eye out for them as well. Uh, in the meantime have a, uh, a lovely rest of your day wherever you're up to, whatever you're doing, take care. Um, and I hope to see you next time here in my next video on uh, LM Simulation. So um, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, link is in the description if you'd like to buy this DLC. This is available on Steam. And that's it from me for now. So uh, take care. And I'll see you in the next video here on LM Simulation. Thank you and bye-bye.